Hello you wonderful people! I'm Marvelixer and this is a new series. This is The Surge. And yes, that does mean I'm following up a modded run of Dark Souls with a Souls-like. And running the risk of pigeonholing this channel's content, but what can you do? This wasn't actually the original plan for what, for what I was going to follow it up with. But the original plan was uh, fall out the frontier and well honestly the less said about that whole situation the better so let's jump into it shall we the ancient greeks once said a society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in we tend to forget about this, tend to be careless, but we have to rise to the task together. It's up to all of us to sow those seeds, and it's up to us to nurture them towards growth. Creo is not just another company. With Project Resolve, we are building the path to the future. Follow us into a new era, a utopia for all mankind. With every launch, we're healing our planet, restoring its natural shield. A return to the green world we remember, where our children can once more play in the sun. Resolve is not only revitalizing the earth, but its people too. We've all dreamed of it, and now Creo is making it a reality. Together, we're strong. Together, we can make a change. Unleash your potential with us. So yeah, that all seems all wonderful and utopian, fixing the world with heading towards a wonderful greener future. I can't possibly see any way in which any of this could go wrong, right? I mean, Welcome. you know it does, right? I mean, there wouldn't be a video I game otherwise. I am, and I'm glad to see you. Creo, you know who we are, or at least you think you do. Everywhere you turn, we're there, whether you see us or not. Maybe it's time to take a closer look. Well, Creo has won the world. I think I do because I've played this game before. But um, anyone else jumping into this for the first time won't have any idea. Reaching for the stars. We've always had our eyes on the big picture. The Creo and the whole uh, Project Resolve thing that was hinted at in the in the intro. It's kind of treated like something that everybody knows in this universe, but um, obviously the player does not know that. Even though you'd assume that your like the player character does, right? And yeah, it's one of those games that gives you, um, makes you look around to check if you want inverted look. Right. I always find it's a nice touch when games do that. I am one of those weirdos that, um, that inverts the Y axis on camera controls. We're happy to welcome you as part of our ever There's always appreciated Please when those options are given. So for those of you not in the know, this game is essentially a sci-fi cyborg souls-like by the same people who made Lords of the Fallen, except this is a lot better than that game. And actually I hear the sequel is even better than this one, so that could be fun to eventually get around to playing on this channel as well when sometime in the future when we're done with this please choose from our two currently available positions and form an orderly queue okay so this is basically like choosing your starting class only it matters even less than in other games I think you still kind of start with the same weapons. 
Creo provides you with the highway to success as a field technician. Light, versatile, and state you, of the art. The only thing that's Gear really different is the armor. Today. And on this side, the uh, lighter ones, you can you can get all of that armor very quickly. Less so for the um uh, for the heavy ones, although you can, I believe, get the whole set within the first area as well. Rig installation program running. But I did a little quick um test playing like a couple program complete. like an hour or so into the game. For the purposes of you know, testing recording levels and everything. And it only gives me two parts of the um well two parts of the arm set when I do that. It gives me one leg and one arm. Whereas I think the light one does give you the whole set. I can't remember exactly, but I went with it for the first um for the first playthrough. I think it does, but yeah, I was also um, just just talking over this kind of horrific medical procedure that's going on that we were supposed to be sedated for, but oh no, we weren't. Um, take out this little scrapper drone. Oh, it doesn't even seem to be attacking at us. And, yeah. You see there? R1 and R2 are your attack buttons, as you might expect from a Souls like. Although it's not light, light attack and heavy attack. have horizontal on R1 and vertical on R2 and both can be charged. Ah, oh, you sneaky little... Alright. <laughs> well, not exactly boding well for <laughs> the rest of the playthrough, is it? Earth won't need resolve. <laughs> Falling through the um, falling for the old enemy round the blind corner trick. Okay, force regulator mark one and pneumatic helix mark one. I believe those are like your upgrade material, essentially your titanite shards, but specifically for certain armor parts. Because yeah, each um, your weapons and each bit of armor has kind of its own upgrade material in this game. And the way you get it is actually pretty cool. Um, get it by chopping off the limbs of enemies and repurposing it for yourself. Vault detected. Your power core seems to be defective. Working power core is needed to use all your ExoRig's features. We're sorry for the inconvenience. Please contact your ExoRig officer, a uh, supply officer, to require a new power core. These little rooms here are like, I think they're called operations. And in, in here, that's like your crafting bench. 
that's where you uh, heal and where you can level up and equip all your little augments, your little injectables. And I hope you like that song because it's going to be playing at every single one. All right, all right, let's talk. Your rig has been damaged. Its distress beacon has been triggered. You need to get back into the factory. How do I get to the factory? Well, okay. I'll just stroll right on over to the factory then. I, I mean, that's not like ask why or anything. <laughs> never far from us. Rather than just say, "Can I leave?" <laughs> Uh, whatever. I don't know you. I'm surrounded by dead people here. Maybe someone would like to explain what's going on. I'm sorry, I don't know. You need to get inside. Maybe you can make something to protect yourself. Operations always has a gear assembly. The rig is damaged? The rig seems to work for me. Honestly, it's the least of my problems. I mean, I can walk. Huh. Never thought I'd be able to say that again. Well, that's good to hear, but the power core is damaged. You'll have to find a new one to make your rig fully functional. And that's all we can say. So get to the factory is kind of the most uh, direction we have right now. And we need to get to a maglev station to do so. On my way. Be careful. And don't forget to replace the power core of your rig or you're not going to get very far. Mm-hmm. This is not a scheduled break time. Yeah, yeah. So there's something in some of these boxes, but um, apparently not. Okay, aggression amplifier V1. Now, it is important to get that. Yes, exo lift, which is currently not working. But if your guess is that you will be able to turn it on from up there and that will serve as a shortcut. Congratulations! Although, probably climb that, but mm, never mind. <laughs> Target weak point. Target your enemy's unarmored head by moving R, the right stick then attack. And yeah. So this is the um, one of the cool little gimmicks in this game that differentiates it from other souls. Like you t target specific body parts and right away it's telling you to go for the unarmored one. Which right now is what we want to do. But overall isn't really the kind of, um, isn't really the best advice for how to succeed in the game. It's perfect for if you just want to kill enemies. Or if you specifically want... Well, if, you, if you're just seeing them as an obstacle, or if you want just the XP rather than the items, but... The items that they drop when you chop off specific limbs, that only happens if you attack an armored part. You listen. You need to upgrade your power core or replace it, otherwise you ain't getting through that door. If you keep trying to overload it without the proper power capacity, security is going to end up all over your ass. When it comes too far to get caught down, those imports are worth thousands. Of dollars. Are going Ow. To get out of your mind. Don't screw it up. And there's the power core. And this, with a little number on it, that's um, like level restricted doors and functions. But we can't, we can't use it at the moment because we do not have our rig's power core. But we just picked it up, so let's go back to operations and Equip it, shall we? Let's 
More pile of rare, uh, rare material scrap. Piles of tech scrap can be consumed from within your inventory to instantly provide you with new tech scrap. So, yeah, in case you kind of hadn't worked it out already, yeah, te tech scrap is basically your souls. And the small piles are basically the consumable soul items that you can find, like, you know, the soul of a brave warrior, soul of a proud knight or whatever. You be at your designated work site? Fault resolved. Your power core has been detected. System rebooting. Core level. Ops use the med bay to bank your collected tech scrap. If the total amount of tech scrap you own, banked and collected, is high enough, you can level up your total core power of your exo rig. All equipped gear and implants come from a portion of your total core power. So, yeah. Um, that's how leveling up works in this game. You do... Like, the only thing you directly increase is your core power. And you use that core power for equipping heavier armor or using different implants. And as for what implants are... Well... Our first one here, Vital Injection. That's, um... Your little health, health regen. So, like... And it replenishes that um, when you rest at ops, like we currently are at the med bay. So it's basically your Estus flask, but yeah, your Estus flask is something you have to equip, and it takes up core power in this game. And the other ones, we have picked up a few more. Aggression amplifier restores health when performing finishing moves, and that is definitely something we want. So that takes up one more core power. Take the medical order to display enemy health gauges because it's completely free. And this is also the last slot we have. At different um, different core power levels, we get extra slots. So yeah, the um, what you can equip is not only limited by your core power, but also just your overall core power level and how many slots you have and also I think as you progress through the game you do actually get more slots as well uh, when you get various upgrades to your suit your core and the last one is vital boost I like a 10% increase to our health for Two core. I'm not sure that's entirely worth it. Let's see what we can do with our to database restored. Checking database. without our armor Your first. Detected. Gear voucher redeemed. Okay, so even so, even when you do select the light one, it does only give you a single arm and a single leg, which is a real pain in the butt. But, hey, at least I can equip them immediately, right? We may as well put the other implant in then, I guess. And pump our core power a bit. And bank our tech scrap. But yeah, we can store our souls at bonfires. Isn't that wonderful? Please remember, safety at work is our highest priority. And should be yours. Right, so here it's probably going to give us the tutorial. Yep, strike enemies to build up energy. Then hold X to perform finishing moves that cut limbs. So, yeah, you may notice we have a new, a new bar underneath our health and stamina. And that is used to perform finishing moves, as it says there. And also to activate certain implants. And you get it by hitting enemies. And that's how you do a finishing move. Target the same body part enough times. Whack it down a bit. 
And then you chop it off. And... You get whatever weapon they were holding. Plus... Whatever armor was on it. Well, you get the weapon... Only if you cut off the, uh, the arm that's holding it. And as a result... That tends to mean that... Usually the first... Uh, the first body part of the bit of your armor that you're able to upgrade is almost always the arms because you go around cutting off people's arms looking for new weapons. Right. So at the moment, what haven't we got? We have one arm, we have one leg. We don't have anything headwise, so let's target that. And, yeah, targeting armored body parts does make the fight tougher. But it is pretty much absolutely necessary making progress in this game. And it can get a little grindy doing that as well. We go for a body. You'll see just how grindy it can be if we do that. <laughs> For a second. There we go. Right. And in doing so, we get the schematic for making the Link's body armor. So. Whenever we go next go back to Ops, you can make a suit of that. Uh, provided we have enough... Um, of the components to create it, that is. No, you don't. Uh, let's go for leg here, I guess. Oh, you absolute dick. Okay. Pretty low in health, that's uh they can inject the ball. And there's one there waiting to ambush me when I go for the one with his back turned. I know you're there. Alright, okay, the one with his back turn suddenly becomes a lot more vigilant when you do that as well. And I guess that it does make sense, because I am making noise. Uh, now they both seem to have given up. Oh my good god. Finally. I think kind of like, um... Uh, the direction that you... Hit the body part also matters as well. Whether it's um, horizontal or vertical. Like what kind of attacks you do on it. Like for example, if you're going for the head, I think it's usually better to... Um... Actually, I don't know. <laughs> it's always kind of confusing. Like, are you going for specifically cutting it? In which case you want to do horizontal. Or are you looking for the, like, the easiest way to damage it, in which case you want to bash down on it with the vertical? And also with arms as well, it's even more confusing. Because, like, you're saying the best way to cut it is when they're outstretched or, like... Because if they're you're going for... Um, like, thinking of best angle to attack it when the arms are outstretched, it's uh, a vertical attack, right? You're hitting down onto an outstretched arm, but if they're, like, by the person's side, then you'd go for a horizontal uh, slash, wouldn't you?
I mean, at least... At least it seems to be fairly simple with, um, with legs, right? You mostly would want to be doing that horizontally. But then again, it's also entirely possible that I've... That I'm completely misremembering how this whole wor system works. And it's entirely placebo. <laughs> About the directions that the directions make any difference whatsoever. I seem to think they do. So, um, sustaining array? What's that? I guess I'll find out when we go back to Ops, right? Issues with Robert Weave again. This time about the exoskeleton program. He's refused to have the implant surgery. We've explained oh, it's no. hardly invasive, even offered to double. Don't refuse bonus. to have the implant no surgery. Management will use it to control the workforce. He even brought up his union nonsense again. If he poisons the others, it could put us months behind schedule. It's amazing. He doesn't see it as making his job easier. I recommend termination. You know, we've put up with too much of his trash talking. Yeah, subtle, isn't it? <laughs> Oh yeah, speaking of subtle as well, in terms of the writing, you also get a little giant floating uh, reminder that you can find shortcuts. I can't believe they just fired Dr. I'm kind of like imagining that like being put, like a giant floating message like that being put into Souls games or like Hollow Knight or anything like that. Any of the other games I've played? She's right. I've seen the data. We've got to keep working, now more than ever. Lesser people would, would give up, but she's not one of them. And, and if she won't, I won't. So we could um, go to the med bay and put our tech scrap into leveling up, but we'll also need the tech scrap to craft gear. Crafting new gear parts can be crafted from schematics by holding X when all Required components are available. Change the mark you wish. Uh, the mark you wish to craft. Use right stick, and the mark is, of course, like the um, the upgrade level of it. And you will need uh, different components. Like in the background, there you can see force regulator mark one to create uh, the Lynx arm gear. And so to create the next bit, it's obviously Force Regulator Mark II and so on. But it's just saying that instead of creating it and upgrading it all the way, you can just immediately create something at a level 2 or level 3. So yeah, what can we make? Uh, we do have enough for the headpiece, so let's make that. Uh, we we do have enough for an arm, which is good, and we have enough for. Okay, we have enough components for the leg, but we do not have enough scrap. All right then, some Bangkok scrap here. Uh, the gear assembly automatically deconstructs your salvage items into crafting components. You can also bank ops your tech scrap here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Use tech scrap and crafting, crafting components to craft and upgrade your gear. Upgraded equipment increases its mark. Upgraded weapons will deal more damage in combat and upgraded armor will increase defense. All obvious stuff. Uh, so yeah, it turns to the alloy. We do want to be cutting off more arms. Because I guess, um... Like the arms of the weapons that we cut off before. They didn't get us the upgrade components. They just got us the weapons themselves. Hmm. So we can change from our reclaimed piston to a vibro cutter. It's the same class of weapon. It's basically your swords of this game. And our proficiency scaling 
uh, like un underneath uh, the like the stats of the the weapon there. That's an interesting little component of it. Um, let's get out of ops so we don't hear that. <laughs> Take care. Don't hear the song. Um, yeah, because the only thing you um, you upgrade when you level up, as I've already said, is your co core power. Uh, your weapon scaling essentially comes from just using weapons. So if I was to use this thing, my weapon proficiency with one-handed weapons would go up. And that would provide more damage when I'm using one-handed weapons, depending on what kind of a level of scaling uh, the weapon itself has. In fact, we've um we've used one handed for a bit already. Let's um see what we can do with a big one, a single rigged weapon. Do you like basically your great swords? Oh, uh, the dudes come back, which is odd because I thought like I didn't use the um didn't use the med bay and I did that specifically because um you see in the uh, the bottom right hand corner when my tech scraps coming in it said uh, times 1.65 that means if you stay out for a while without resting you get a multiplier on the amount of tech scrap you collect and resting at ops resets it. Uh, specifically at the med bay. But, um... Depositing all your tech scrap in the crafting station doesn't, for whatever reason. Now you may be asking why am I going through the um, through this uh, part of the level that I've already done rather than just using the shortcut. Well, I'm doing it specifically to farm upgrade material so I can actually craft a full set of armor. So I might actually craft the full set of armor and meet you back at ops when I've done that. There's our other leg. We'll bank the tech scrap. Go back the body bits. And also probably enough um, core power to actually equip the stuff. But yeah. Have a nice day, Warren. Alright. Um, yep, yeah, that's enough. We can make the body now. Also got enough uh, tungsten alloy to upgrade one of our weapons. Um... It's between these two, isn't it? Let's just do the sword. So, yeah. And that's the, uh... General, like, loot and upgrade system in this game. And... Oh, wait, what's the other one? Um, hot... Sustaining array slows energy decay. Mm. Yeah, we just unequip that so we can equip our suit. We're still three core levels away from, um, oh no, four. Yeah, because these are two. The only bit that's one core power is the head, so yeah. Four levels away from being able to equip everything. Um, we do want 
this Have equipped. Nice day, Warren. Uh, yeah, let's follow this shortcut. And, and yeah, the whole um, combat system of attacking enemy specific limbs and slicing them off your upgrade material, that's really cool. That's a really cool concept, but it does make a lot of the game pretty grindy. Because, of course, you need, you need to do it every time. You need to kind of... repeatedly go for the same enemies over and over again for specific um, body parts every time you want to upgrade a new weapon or new set of armor. Oh my god. I do have to admit, it's pretty cool. <laughs> now this is, um... Probably kind of a... a oh, plasmic regenerator. I think that's an, another healing thing, but yeah. Should be useful. It's probably kind of like an esoteric kind of comparison reference here. But, um, the whole chopping off bits of, um, cyborg's limbs and using them to upgrade yourself kind of reminds me of an old, um, like a um, Mega Drive slash Genesis game called Cyborg Justice. Almost feels like that, like that game crossed with a, a modern kind of a Souls-like game. Because <laughs> yeah, that was a game where. You and all the other, all the enemies were all, all cyborgs, much like here. And you'd have arms with specific weapons on them. And if you got tired of the one you were using, you could, um, you could, in fact, chop off an enemy's one and start using that. Pop off their torso and use it to heal yourself as well. <laughs> uh, how do I get that? Error, door can't be opened from this terminal. Please use terminal on the opposite side. So, yeah, that's the classic does not open from this side door. It uh, looks like, in order to get that, I would have to fall down from there. But how get there? Uh, this is connection failure. Door cannot be opened right now. Hmm. It is a mystery. I suspect we'll find a way to do it eventually, though, right? Oh, hello. Okay. So when I'm attacking, like, their unarmored areas, I think I am, most of the time, kind of killing them too quickly. I'm too quickly for getting an execution, that is. <clears throat> Once you join Creo, you'll never want to leave. And want to has been crossed out. Open this door, shall we?
and take on these two drones. Where that's taken us is, yep, right back to Ops. So that is another shortcut. Even though they didn't have the massive floating text informing us of the fact that it is a shortcut, it still is. <laughs> Here we have a massive crane. And the drone that just shot me. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the little pulses that, um, take away all your, uh, stamina and energy. Right. I know I, if I start attacking that, yeah, you might be a problem. The, uh, the old spaceman. I think these are like, um, the spaceman dudes are like from a free DLC, like the cutting edge pack or something. But yeah, they're pretty tough. As you can completely see. <laughs> Alright then. Well, now's also uh, time remember. to explain the death mechanic here. General gameplay, pass the tech scratch. Be be oh, wait, that's. Yeah, there we go. Lost tech scrap. You'll drop all tech, scrap you're carrying when you die, go to it. Um, kind of disappeared from screen before um, I could read the whole thing, but um, I think it's basically just going to say that, yeah, you are timed. But you do have a little thing telling you. Where it is. Oh, what's that icon that was under my, um... Okay. It's gone now. There was an icon under my, um... Life, stamina, and energy bars. Mm, burns like hell. Yeah, but there's a shiny in there. Reinforced peep. So that'll be our first, uh, potential spear weapon. Oh. I think this is how you get those, uh, that thing I couldn't get earlier, right? No. It's just if you want to, um, surprise these dorks. Oh, my goodness. Burns like hell. Initiating a finishing sequence does not guarantee that the cut will be successful. Be sure to concentrate your attacks on the part you want to cut to improve your chances. Machines aren't taking your job. You are taking theirs. But you has been overwritten with they and theirs has been overwritten with you. They are taking you. A spaceman. Right, let's target the right arm because I do kind of want that weapon. And also because... Oh my god. Oh. I think he just uh, activated something. I'm not sure what. Ouch. Yep. I 
think like this guy can heal as well, which is a real pain in the butt when it does when he does. Oh, I had it for a moment. Got it. Get dead. Okay, wrecked Angel 6 arm gear. Codename Engelhart. We got schematics for it. And got an extra weapon. Which is another single rigged one, much like uh this Spectre Bite that we've already used. Except it's just um kind of all round better. <laughs> nice and chunky. I uh, might uh, consider upgrading that. Like obviously um, the, like the way weapon proficiency scaling works is does kind of reward sticking to one or two classes of weapons but on the other hand, things scale. Well, it starts out much quicker in t in terms of um, the proficiency levels, but um, oh my god. Hmm. Okay, so I've decided I do not want to take on that crane. I've um. Lost all my tech scrap to it. Uh, there was another way from the beginning that we could go. That I didn't check out at the time. Go up this little tube here. Um. Okay, that was weird. Oh, come on. God, I'm playing like other crap here. Is it? There we go. Right. Uh, what is this then? Alright, just some um, basic armor upgrade stuff. And it is appreciated, I guess. Another thing that's different in the opening area is that if you go into this bit, there's another spaceman. And I believe, much like the, the one we fought by the crane, that uh, his weapon, his armor, and everything is all Mark II. So you can get all the components for that if you want to uh, very slowly farm your way up to um, having Mark II everything before you complete this area. I mean, it's not the worst idea, but um, just kind of a slow process, you know? Right. How are we for the ability to upgrade things? We have, um, oh, plenty. Plenty of Mark 1. Uh, we need to cut Mark 2 weapons twice more in order to upgrade a weapon to level 2. But that'll come in time. And I think, like, the, the spacemen are the only source of uh, Mark 2 anything right now. I mean, we could upgrade the uh, codename Engelbert. I mean, why not, right? Nice. 
And we've got this big bass cannon on our arm. Anytime. Hey, yeah, just dropping in to do um, a little post-commentary outro here because I did originally intend for every area of this game to be its own episode, but it turns out that the areas, um, the locations in this game go on for quite a bit longer than I expected, so I'm going to have to cut it up into separate uh, separate videos. So, yeah, um, so I'm just going to put a cut in here and say thank you very much for watching. I've been Love Lexus. This has been The Surge. And yeah, welcome to the new series. Hope you enjoy it, and I hope to see you soon in the next one. See ya!